Vibration. How you doing? I am here with another author interview from Raise the Vibration, a weekly guide for alchemizing the human experience. And this particular author is kind of important to me, and uh, many of you know him. Just happens to be my favorite person in the whole world. And there oh he is. God. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> you get it. You get it. It's you. It's you. It's always uh, been you. Uh, uh, none other so than my beautiful husband. Those of you who are like, who are these people? <laughs> if you're watching this, <laughs> my beautiful husband, Anthony Wood, is one of the authors in the Raise the Vibration, a weekly guide for alchemizing the human experience. And what's super cool about your story is that it actually starts here. I got to pull it up here. It actually starts the very next season the book is um sectioned into four seasons one for each of the seasons of the year and this one is actually the very first in the season of summer so we are just around the corner from that and uh that's perfect because i know i love summer you love summer and you're like <laughs> a sun in my life like you're light Aww. in my life Aww. and um <laughs> as are you Thank you, honey. And um, we're gonna get is, too gushy here. I think. I know. I know. I know. We're gonna gross people out in a second. <laughs> uh, but this guy uh, obviously means the world to me, and has stood by me through this entire process where I've, I felt like I've been losing my mind and trying to get everything together with the editing process, and has just stood by my side and been such a source of support. So I can say with absolute certainty, I would not have gotten to the finish line without you and uh, in so many aspects of my life. Uh, and I'm just so excited that you're here. So, I mean, I'll share, I mean, I could speak Thank forever you. about you, of course, but I want you just to tell the people who are watching a little bit about yourself um, and uh, just share with them your, a little bit about your background and what you do. Um, <laughs> I am a healer of sorts. <laughs> I've been practicing massage therapy for over 20 years. And that's, that's a lot of what uh, the story is about is how my path kind of converged into that, that path, which, you know, as a youngster, if you would have asked me what I was going to be when I grew up, I would not have said a massage therapist. But lo and behold, here I am, and really just thriving with what I'm doing. Um, but I'm, I'm originally from Kentucky and uh, had a really lovely um, upbringing. My parents were wonderful parents. They, they always saw to it that all of our needs were taken care of. Uh, they always encouraged us with things we wanted to do to explore, um, you know, either as athletes or even as singers or, or what have you, or, or artists. Um, they, they were always, um, it provided a nice shelter for us to to play with them. I remember growing uh, with my twin brother, Tim, uh, we could play for hours with our stuffed animals and we made uh, <laughs> like television shows with our, the different animals. We had names for all of them and we would just uh, improvise for hours. And, uh, you know, we had that that space and that safety to be able to do that, to explore that. So uh, we were brought up in a really just comfortable, uh, free within uh, the realms of a secure household uh, experience. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, it's beautiful. And, uh, yeah. It is. It is. Not uh, everybody you know, has that, you know, and, and especially as an artist, what, to have that foundation is so critical. Yeah. And a lot of the, you know, a lot of like the, the darkness of childhood that, that people can share about, I don't really have that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't really have that. Darkness you missed to share out. About. You really missed out. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> the darkness happened later. That's right. That's right. My dark night of my soul. Yeah. Happened a little, a little later in my life, um, and we'll we'll of course get to that in mm -hmm. just a bit. But um, yeah, I just had a really, uh, really um, kind of pure, loving, uh, um, just um, harmonious, really childhood. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and some of you know who are watching, but many of you don't. That Anthony, and I actually met when 
we were in college. So we met right before my first year of college, before your second year, and dated a semester. And then I ended up transferring schools and you moved to New York, I moved to New York, and we ended up in the same city, ran into each other over and over again, and then the rest is history, yeah. as they say. Uh, but we yeah. met because we had both had a passion and have a passion for the arts, for acting, directing, music, and studying and studying the depths of the human experience. And um, so, Anthony, we tell us about your schooling. You have a background, you know, a little bit about your background and why you chose to write this story as opposed to all the other. I mean, I, I know you better than probably anybody on the planet, as do you know me better than anybody on the planet. We know what we've been through. We know a lot of things that we've overcome and the resilience that each of us have faced individually and then also together as husband and wife. But why this story? Why did you choose this story for the book? I chose this story because becoming a famous act and a successful actor was my ticket to greatness. And I always felt mm, that I was yeah. destined for greatness, just not in the way that, that I had idealized that um, growing up. Uh, and mm -hmm. also growing up in my household, I believe that anything was possible. And we, we were kind of the apple of our family's eyes, both of us. We yeah. were the boys. We, we, were, <laughs> we were the twins. And uh, we were, you know, we, we were championed as, um, you know, good athletes, um, nice looking guys, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of potential, <laughs> smart. I noticed you know. that right away, um, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I believe that. I mean, mm -hmm. I believe that that because it was reinforced consistently. Um, uh, and so because I was, it was reinforced with all these, these fine qualities, I thought, um, you know, as I, in middle school, I started get in, getting into singing and acting and, and was, you know, I was, I, I was good at it. I could definitely grow. Um, and I didn't realize that until I started really studying it. Um, but uh, uh, I just thought, well, hey, this, this is my ticket because it seems to be working. It seems to be falling into place. And for a while it was falling into place because I got into the undergraduate school that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into a graduate school that was one of my top choices for acting. Uh, but when once I finally graduated and moved to New York City, I began to really understand in a very uh, uh, traumatizing way, <laughs> traumatizing in some ways, just just like a, a real dose of reality, how I needed to really bust my butt mm -hmm. if I wanted to be that famous actor that I wanted to be. And I just, it was like, once I moved to New York City, after attending graduate school in New, New Jersey at Rutgers, I, I realized that I just didn't have the fight for that. Mm -hmm. And that was so hard for me to take. That was really hard for my family to take too, because they had, there was a lot riding on sure. Anthony, you know, sure. becoming a successful actor in New York City and, and perhaps on the West Coast too, doing movies. and. Like all of that really excited yeah. me. Like I said, I really enjoyed that. My brother and I had our TV show with our stuffed animals and even <laughs> later with friends, oh, we yeah. were making home videos. <laughs> Those are classics. Like short movies, like all the time. Like, yeah, you've yeah. seen them. They're, oh, I've seen, they're, they're brilliant. Fun. They're brilliant. They're fun. Yeah. We're just having a great time. And and that just always lit me up. So it just felt like the right path. But mm -hmm. when, when I, when that dose of reality of living in New York City and really fighting, for that career became a reality it just wasn't there mm -hmm. it just wasn't there and and at the same time I had realized from my acting studies which are based in certain metaphysical techniques mm -hmm. uh, uh, influenced by metaphysical and healing techniques I realized through a lot of the workshops and and exercises that we we're doing that um there was some healing that I could do. Um, and I began to feel so much more drawn 
to healing myself and and uh, and stu and study certain modalities of healing it, it, that really lit me up started to light me up much more than um, the whole notion of of uh, going through the just going through uh, that the lifestyle that that would entail to mm -hmm. try to be an actor and and how much work and how hard that can be um, just even financially um, mm -hmm. so I just felt more drawn to that. I enrolled myself into massage school in, in Manhattan. And it was, it, it was unbelievable because it was like the first time I was going to school that I was enjoying every class I was taking. And I was just like, this is, I, I'm enjoying this. I was getting massage regularly too, because <laughs> we had to thing. practice on one another. <laughs> but, but I, but that, that, that brought a lot of healing as well uh, yeah. uh, through touch of other people and just opening myself in that way and mm -hmm. then opening myself to others. And that, that was, uh, that was an example of me stepping into or beginning to step into a new path that just, it was kind of a shoe in for me. It was just, it just came natural. Whereas pursuing a lifestyle that the lifestyle of an actor, it felt like I was really like the tide all of a sudden was not, was kind of against me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, and I can't, the, another way to explain it is just my soul was just saying, no, that's you've, you've done that. You've done what you need to do with this. Now we're going to move on to other things. And of course, mm -hmm. leading that lifestyle, I feel really attracted me to, to you and what you were doing. And then what we eventually began to start doing together with, with the, the Giving Tree Yoga Studio that we yeah. ran for 10 years. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing how our lives unfold if we just pay attention and we don't dictate, but we co-create and listen. Right. And like whether that's with our partners, with you and I as husband and wife, or whether it's with, with God and with the universe or however you give name to that. Like, and, and I love that. The name of your story is validation liberation and the theme is 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 validation it's like so many people who go down certain paths whether they major in a certain topic and, or they go get their masters or their doctorate really feel locked into pursuing that because we've identified with that got an external oh, yeah. validation for it yes and then feel locked into it because we we're like, well, who am I? I mean, even right. even putting the giving tree in new hands was a challenge because we were so identified with being the center of that community and really sourcing a healing community in New York City. Uh, so I think it's so incredible that you wrote this story because it was a pivotal moment in your life. Something that we're both passionate about is is the arts and really studying and and knowing when it was time to say, there's something else that my soul is calling me to do and being with the disappointment of your family and your own disappointment or feeling like the external reflection is I didn't pursue this because I'm not good enough or I'm not committed enough or all these things that we can do to self-sabotage. Instead, it was, you know what, this is, I don't want to invest my time in this precious life and this limited time I have on earth on this path anymore. Like this is calling my name. And I think it's a very inspiring story that a lot of people are going to get a lot out of because it's, it's really, it's an example of having a cur courageous moment in your life where you, I love, there's a part, I, I can't remember exactly the wording. Well, of let it. me just, can I just add something? Yeah, really? yeah, of course. Oh, well, actually, uh, can you hold that thought for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay, Cause I just wanted to just, it was yeah. on, along the same lines of what you were just saying. Yeah. It, there was about once I graduated from massage school, there was about 10 years of denial like that was i was still fighting <laughs> <laughs> because of my identification i had such a strong identification i remember yeah yeah yeah. when people would ask me who, what i was or what i did i would say i'm an actor and i felt like so yeah i felt so like excited and empowered to say that so to <laughs> let go of that even though i was feeling i was absolutely feeling more strongly about this path as a healer um that was that was a good decade actually right. until i finally i finally was just like yeah i'm i'm not really <laughs> 
perhaps down the road, I could get into a project of some kind, whether writing or acting. I'm st I'll still remain open to that. But as of now, yeah. my path very strongly is, is, you know, what we were doing with the yoga studio and that we've continued doing. Now we're in Denver with yeah. me continuing to do massage therapy work and uh, how it ties into what you're doing and then what mm -hmm. we're still doing with our business in New York City. So, yeah. Uh, 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 th that that was that was a real kind of unraveling kind of mm -hmm. like a, um you know an, un an unpeeling of the layers too to to finally just be like no I'm, I'm not i'm not an actor i'm a healer yeah or that's just not your focus right now or your main focus because I absolutely think a lot of people stay you said denial for 10 years a lot of people stay in denial for a lot longer than that because that's how they've identified with who they are what they're doing and um yeah. and what touched me so deeply um in the story was the wording about like instead of wanting to be seen i wanted to see myself instead of wanting to be known as an actor i wanted to know myself and and that that is something that in order to surrender the ego, uh, the glorification and the, you know, uh -huh. the prioritization of the ego's needs, you listen to more what your soul needed, which was your own validation. And yeah. So, yeah. And you could say that I, you could say I had a choice, but internally it, it felt like I knew what I needed to do. You know, it wasn't really, okay. I could have really tried to like, start continue pursuing the other path but but um i just knew like this this is my path that, and yeah that's all that you know it's, it's just a feeling it is and you're in touch with that i think that's you know you you shared with me many times of course about how like connecting in the specific classes where you're studying vibration or energy and kind of movement and feeling more of a subtle frequencies and tapping into that that set you up for you know the the work that you're doing now with your healing practice and just how we're partnering together with what we're doing with raise, raise the vibration and um you know when i look back and i see you know how our stories have unfolded even just our our love story. I mean, there's so many of these nudges along the way where if we didn't listen, we would have mm -hmm. missed out on so much. And right. I feel like that's one of the main messages of your story is like, be brave enough to shake free of the expectations you put on yourself or that other people have or mm -hmm. needing that validation from other people. Yeah. And so in your words, what do you want the reader to take from this? Because there are 52 authors who have contributed their experiential stories of resilience and the mm -hmm. lessons that they learned, what they wish they knew then. So you, in going through this, you, you learned what to do. You shook free of that addiction to external validation and were able to mm -hmm. carve your own path. And the yeah. peace I know being your partner, the peace that you have because you did that is something you would have never had had you kept on going in that state of denial or feeling like you should go in that direction. Um, right. So what do you want the reader to take away from the story? Well, I called it validation liberation because as I have continued to let go of my need to be validated, I have uh, found for myself freedom that there's and and that's the message is there's freedom in that that's where you that's your freedom mm. that's a huge piece of your freedom is uh letting go of needing to be validated by others uh and and owning what you do and opening yourself to what it is you do that that comes naturally to you that's your natural talents that's your natural abilities that that um the path uh, of growth. What is the, what is your path of growth? Um, how, uh, uh, what's the path that's going to enrich your life in the deepest way possible? And yeah, that, that requires courage. And yet again, uh, f for me, it's it just I just knew. You know, it's like when I when we cross paths again, I just yeah. knew. Um, and I think we ha all have that, that capability to know 
Um, and that just requires listening, learning how to listen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, um, uh, that's related to the chakra that I, I matched with your story, which is the seventh chakra related to mm -hmm. receptivity and guidance and oneness and our connection to source energy or God or the universe or synchronicity, angels, mm -hmm. um, working with others. Uh, because if we don't listen to those nudges and we stay kind of hard nosed and, and just forcing the path that we think we should be going, we miss it completely. Uh, it's a real co-creation uh, story for sure. And, and yeah. so, okay. So I want to ask you, this as like a kind of like a final question that I asked the authors is, you know, storytelling is so beautiful and so important from indigenous times until now. We pass on our stories. Uh, and when we do that, we share our wisdom. When we share our stories, we also get to process them more so ourselves. It's why you and I were both initially drawn towards the arts, especially acting, directing, music, where we tell stories through words and song, because it's a natural desire to express the inexpressible, like this incredible experience of being alive and, and the great playwrights and the great songwriters and, and the composers who are able to put the most beautiful things into art. It's why we're drawn to that. And I mean, I feel like you'll always be, have that actor side. You'll always have that passion sure. for expression. That's just who you are. I mean, we oh, still yeah. sing together. You we'll know? ask, yeah, and ask, uh, anybody yeah you know i i had a great audience for all these oh. years, so i appreciate that <laughs> you, you broke up you broke up a little bit when i said, you were I, saying I, said that. I love i love having an audience i uh, and i'm not just saying that to get me. you to repeat it <laughs> oh <laughs> i didn't know if you heard it um, no, i heard it i heard it on zoom where we're recording this too but yeah you, i have a great audience for me i appreciate because because uh, i i do you're right there is a part of me that still needs who or wants an audience you yeah know, who wants, who wants to express himself and be received by someone else or by others and Absolutely. you're a great entertainer and you have a real All passion right. and talent for it so i mean it's something that like that's what we need to do as human beings, not just the actors or the singers, is find our way of expressing ourselves through what we do, through our, our right. hobbies, our careers or whatever. So in, my last question is, in writing this story, uh, you know, we left a few pages at the end of the book for the, for the readers to author their own stories because it is such a powerful practice as writing down or journaling. Mm -hmm. And what did you get out of actually authoring this story for yourself? It was the the final kind of piece of the puzzle to completely let go of the validation mm. of being being seen and accepted and embraced as an actor, as you know that actor archetype. Mm. I hear like owning fun... your story, like owning it, like just embracing yeah. it yourself. Because yeah. to that point in time, I was still carrying it a little bit. Still what? I mean, I, I, I've done a lot of work, but that, that solidified it for me. Mm. I don't feel like I'm carrying it at all anymore. Yeah. You know, um, I, I you know, there, there are times where it's so difficult. Like, like I see a classmate yeah. <laughs> but like <laughs> from whatever Rutgers or Evansville booking yeah. something and doing well with with acting and and you know when it's all said and done I'm you know, uh, I'm very happy for them I think that's amazing yeah. that they've been able to do that like kudos to them that's incredible but you know the pain of, of seeing it like oh <laughs> Maybe I should. Like, what if that would? Be, what if you continued on the path? That's the. Yeah. That's the unknown. Yeah. Except in the choose your own adventure books from when we were little, where we could read every <laughs> outcome of every choice that we would make in those books. Mm, Life's a little yes. different, you know. Yes. And, right. And, yeah. <laughs> it, However, um, I we I've, I've shared with you the uh, the script about the. Um, the uh, sitcom. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say what it's called. I'm not even going to. I'm not going to. No, don't give it away. I'm not going to share <laughs> the idea, 
but uh, I, I, I could see that as a real possibility uh, yeah. down the road, absolutely. Well, what's so, yeah, uh, it's such, it's a, such great, a great idea. It's such a great idea. It would be so, it'd be so yeah. fun. And I, the, if there's anything that I, that I love the most about acting was the collaboration with other people, mm-hmm. creative collaboration with others. I just love that. It's so fun. Well, that's where it started with your brother, like playtime, being that's able right. to be creative and that's expressing right. together. And, yeah. you know, that's why you know, we're, we, we have a life. We have one life and we don't have to choose one thing. Like if we are doing Absolutely. something for a while and we're like, mm, that's great. But I don't even if we're super successful at it, you know, we could have stayed in that studio in New York City for another 20 years, you know, because we felt the yoga like we studio. needed to stay so, there. Yeah. So people, so people know what you're talking about. Yo, the yes, yoga studio the yoga, in New York. Studio. Yeah, thank you. And that was, center. that was going well. And it was a beautiful community. We could have kept doing that. And, and it's like, we listen to our souls and went a different path, you know, and I think it's really important in your messaging and, and the story especially is like and especially because this other project that you're that you're working on now too that is involved in the entertainment world is that you can always come back to something or you come back to it after you have another experience and you think yeah. wow i feel more motivated to go in that direction now but absolutely if you're forcing anything number one you're miserable you're suffering clearly because it's not flowing yeah. it's not natural mm-hmm. doesn't mean hard work isn't involved because you've worked your butt off i've seen it with everything that you've been doing since you know i've known you uh, but that's the thing is like listening to that co-creative energy of that seventh chakra of the guidance and where you're going and right and, right uh, right yeah well I, and I feel that I've been very blessed as far as guidance goes I feel that mm-hmm. for some for some reason I, I've I've just always given myself space to listen. You know, we're coming back to, I just mentioned this earlier about the listening and, and mm-hmm. listening to your intuition, listening to your guidance. Uh, for some reason, it's just, it's just inherent in me to, to listen, to, to listen to the signs, to listen to, to what, what the next step on my journey is. And it's never, it has never left, left me high and dry. It's mm-hmm. never left me feeling like, um, you know, that I'm lost or that maybe, maybe, you know, during some of my darker times, I was feeling lost, but, Mm -hmm. but I I just, I just had this sense that uh, if it feels, if it, if, if it, if if it's, if it feels like it's the right next step, then it is. Mm. And uh, just trusting that. um, Yeah. Well, and also you are a great listener just as a partner and as a friend and a colleague. Thank you. you're a great listener. And I even go to you. I mean, people don't know the inner workings of our relationship, but I'll go to Anthony all the time and be like, what's your intuition about this? Because sometimes like I can't see because I'm trying to force the outcome. And that's what we do as, for each other as partners. Right. Is I'll go to you and say, well, what do you think? Like, what is this? Or you'll come to me and like, we'll bounce yeah. this off. Because sometimes when our ego has an agenda and it's kind of driving the bus, then we can't really receive that guidance uh, from our partner, our partnership with each other, or even Mm -hmm. just, um, just the little nudges that we are always getting. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. Well, beautiful. Thank you for (laughs) allowing me to interview my beautiful husband. And uh, thank you for having me in your, (laughs) thank you for having me in book. It's so cool. Like you, for for uh, many of the authors, they are now published authors because of your work. So mm. thank you. That's really cool. Yeah, I can put that so on my exciting. resume. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. So impressive. <laughs> yes, I'll expect that on your resume for your next job. <laughs> you. I'll do. I'll, I'll yeah. get on that right away. I just I am so excited. You're a part of this book. That you're my partner. Obviously, yeah. like just. We, we're so blessed with one another and um, I'm just blessed with all the authors who have contributed to this book as well. It's just such a beautiful compilation of people sharing their wisdom, trusting me with it and then turning it into taking those stories and kind of putting them in a pot and stirring them up with a lot of journaling prompts and chakra references and weekly challenges and vibe hacks. So 
we are doing the launch. Oh my gosh, it's a week from this Sunday in New York City, the book launch in, in the East Village. I just cannot wait uh, to celebrate with you, obviously, uh, but then with all the other authors and friends and colleagues who will be there. So, And I'm excited to give the book to all of my clients as gifts. Aww. Maybe around, maybe as like a Christmas gift. We'll see. Aww. We'll see how we work that out. But absolutely. Like that's. I might be able to give you a, a discount. Gift. I might be able to give you a discount. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Record scratch. Was... Right. No, yeah. it's a beautiful it gift. It's a great gift for people. <laughs> it's like, it's something that you, it, you're always looking for things to give to each other and, and like a friend or, or even somebody you don't know very well. This is such a great gift of like giving somebody. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a it's it's a healing tool. It's yeah. it's a it's you know it's it's yeah. a great healing tool, absolutely. absolutely. And it also yeah. creates community, like getting to know people's mm -hmm. stories and and just connecting with them in that way. So, all right, my yeah. love. Well, I'll see you in about thirty seconds when we turn this off. And I'll meet you in the other room. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry. Let's have some dinner. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. All right, you guys. Right. Thank you much for watching, right. and until next time. Keep raising the vibration, everybody. Keep raising the vibration. All right. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.